Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's Thursday, September the 30th, last day of September. You know how many days are in each month? The only way I can remember is, I don't know how old I was when someone taught me that. 30 days has September, April, June, and November. All the rest have 31 except February, which has 28, and then sometimes not if it's a leap year. But let's not go there. I don't understand leap years. Uh, but a happy morning to you. Good morning. I hope all is well with you as we continue plowing through the book of Romans. We're in chapter 12. And um, I am so happy to be able to read to you from verse 9 today. So we covered yesterday this, this gifting, really, for a couple of days. We have different gifts, uh, verse 6. Um, uh, yeah, we have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it's serving, then serve. If it's teaching, then teach. If it's encouraging, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Now, on top of that comes a list of Christian behavior patterns that are supposed to characterize the person who's a follower of Jesus Christ. So it's a differentiation between gifting, the charismatic gift and gifting that God puts in to people's lives, which not everyone is to be a leader, not everyone has the gift of prophesying, but now what he's talking about is universal. This is applicable to all of us. You get the difference. And he starts where he always would start, Paul, love. Love, verse 9, love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. That first phrase in verse 9 uh, has no verb in it in the Greek. So love, sincere. Be sincere. Unfeigned love. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Just one verse, I don't feed us today. Love must be sincere. So love is the overwhelming characteristic of the true Christian. If we don't have love, we're terrible advertisement for Christ. And if we don't have love, it doesn't matter how much knowledge we have about doctrine. Oh, do you understand? Someone wrote to me and said, oh, your understanding of uh uh, the election of God, God's uh, sovereignty versus man's free will. You, 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 don't, you don't even understand the, uh, anything of it. Uh, but he did. And maybe he does. But even with that knowledge, without love, zero. Charismatic gifts, without love, zero. Faith to move mountains, zero. So Paul's always going to come back to love. I'm quoting from 1 Corinthians 13. So love is the telltale sign of a true believer. By this shall all men know you're my disciples, not because you speak in tongues, interpret, prophesy, understand uh, uh, doctrinal, deep doctrinal truth, no love. And love is manifest on our relationships with other people. So it's how we walk, not how we talk. Love is supreme. God is love. Love must be, let it be sincere, unfeigned. So now, after going from the gifts that you might be a leader or be able to prophesy or whatever, now for all of us, it's get back to the, to the earth here, everyday living. You don't prophesy every day, but you have to love every day. You can't even show mercy every day, possibly. But these gifts of teaching, and, and other things like that are not manifest every hour of every day, but love is supposed to be that way. And let it be sincere. In other words, no fake love, no, no, no talk love, and then no act love. Love must be sincere. 
Hypocrisy, phoniness, is something that clings to all of us. And Paul is saying to be a follower of Jesus, he never had one hypocritical fake bone in his body. What he said he meant and what he meant he said. And he loved. So love among us should not be fake. Oh, hi, how good to see you. Like, you know, really, I was thinking about you. And then the minute the person is out, we skewer them with criticisms and slander or whatever. No, we don't need that. That's the way the world acts. Christians are supposed to be sincere. Without sincerity, you really, how, how do you serve the Lord? He wants truth in the inward parts, not just objective doctrinal truth, but sincerity. Be real. Notice what follows that. Hate what is evil, cling to what is good. Did you know that God can not only give us love, but God can work in us to a way where we hate what is evil. And the word there for hate is the strongest kind of word that could be in the Greek for hate. In other words, abhor, turn away in disgust from what's evil. Boy, that'll cure a lot of temptation, wouldn't it? That God can do such a work of sanctification in us and love for him and love for others that the thought of evil would be repugnant to it. Hate what is evil. Not just overcome evil, not just resist temptation, but hate, hate evil. That's why a person who's really walking in the spirit full of God has a real hard time, in a sense, walking through this world because everything around it, so much of what's around it is, is evil, sensual, lying, hate-filled, angry, racist, prejudiced, discriminatory, excuse me. So hate what is evil and cling to what is good. The word there for cling is a word like adhere, like in the closest possible way. Cling to what is good. Not just say, wow, good is that, isn't that nice? No, every day, by the Spirit of God, by the grace of God, turn away from evil, hate it, hate a lie, hate stealing. God can do that in us. Righteous indignation can exist in us where we not just say that's wrong, where we go, yeah, no. And cling to what is good, cling to it. Kindness, righteousness, honesty. Cling to it. Something noble. Uh, the Word of God. Cling to it. Fellowship with other believers. Cling to it. Mm, for us, that's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Walk with Jesus today. Amen. Amen.